Greetings everyone, it's Alexor again, and today we are back with a minion build, but it's a very... It's a, it's a budget build. It's not bad, but it's a little less strong than the Rathlot. You've seen me post two builds, build guides about the Rathlot, but this one is cheaper, and especially if you just, for the life of you, cannot get the Harbor helmet, what it's, what's it called? The one from the actor. So you can cast the Rathlot. If you can't make it happen, this is a good substitution. It still does a lot of damage. It doesn't do 100k, 700k crits like the Wrath Lord, but still he crits for like 30 to 50k. And so you can do everything easily. This is a Empowered Monolith, 100 Corruption, the last one, the last Ruin, the very last one. And he still does fine. As you can tell, it's not insane, but he shreds this Exiled Mage pretty fast. Nothing crazy about it. We portal him with us. And the idea is he shoots these frost thingies and they always crit. It's a very similar build to the Wrath Lord. A little bit different because we also skip a little bit into the Warlock. But you see it's 13k, 15k crits consistently. Which is of course not insane, but this is a budget version. This is for beginners if you can't get your unique, so you don't want to... Uh, just can't get the one you need. And you're missing on a bunch of them, then this one is a great, great one to still... Do all the endgame content, no problem, if you want to do it with a minion, uh, with Necromancer rather. I like this a lot, it's very simple and it's also easier to play than the Wrath Lord for a simple reason, because the mage doesn't cast his fucking Wraths, because, as you know with the Wrath Lord, I constantly had the issue of applying the Dreadshade properly, I can't click on it. Yeah, we'll take it properly on the Wrath Lord because the Wraths are always running around, so it's a bit difficult. You only have one minion that makes it very easy to so never run into these problems. You see, this is a 100 Corruption Empowered Monolith. I run through it easily, no problem. Now I have a bit more of a more damage build, or more, more mobility build. If you die fast, there is also a version that needs one more unique. That helps you to survive longer. Oh god, this shit. So, um, there is a different version. Ooh, it's a lot of melee damage. This also. Oops. But, let's look at it. What it actually does. The idea is the following. Ah, 2 LP. We're gonna take that. As I said, it's pretty much the same as the Wrath Lord. Just slight adjustments. First, the items. As you can tell, we only have... Whoops, that was not it. Three uniques, and you don't even need these two here. Uh, this one. You could you could actually bring it down to two uniques, the Exanctionist and the Death Rattle. And of course, you need to set up the Lich Skull, which you should have this drops very frequently, really. Um, but then you need the Exanctionist. This is pretty much like you need this, okay? If you play the game without having Exanctionist, you're failing. I'm sorry, but you need it. And the Death Rattle you should drop very easily. Um, I have two of these, so it shouldn't be a problem. So it's a very cheap build, right? It just needs two uniques. And the rest is just exalts, uh, which you can farm pretty easily. There is one gimmick I have, which is this. Especially over here, as you can tell, at the bottom it says increase minion damage. And five minions teleported around you after you use a traversal skill. Because you want to use transplant to portal around and bring the mage with you, because the mage Unlike the Wrath Lord, is a slow ass. He just doesn't move his ass ever. He's very slow, he's always behind you. So if you want to go through the monolith fast, or through the Echoes rather, you have to keep portaling him around. If you die early, people usually use the last house of the living. It's another unique, you get this from Frostage for Moses quite frequently, I would say. Because it has a lot of ward decay threshold, gives you more ward, so you are tankier. Okay, so you survive easier. If you die easy, this is the boots. But then you lose the ability to portal him around with you, like this. See, he's next to me. This is why I like that. So, the idea is very simple. You have to Lich Scorn, which turns your Dreadshade into cold damage. Because you want to have the, the Cryomancer Mage, and you have the Arc Mage. And with the items, it's very simple. You have melee spell damage, because he does spell damage, right? He keeps casting these spell frozen thingies. So you want to have melee, minion melee spell damage, or minion spell damage rather, not melee, or just straight minion damage. This and intelligence. All these, as you can tell, scaling tags, minion and intelligence. So intelligence or minion damage or minion spell damage. These three things 
scale your damage on your mage. This is what you want. If you saw this, this looks like shit. It doesn't make it any better. Vitality. Oh, this is better. So, as you can tell, I put intelligence on this one. We have um, chance to find potions. That's irrelevant. We have intelligence on here. The fire damage is irrelevant. I just took it for the intelligence and the implicits. You also got to check the implicits. Look at the implicits on this item. 30% minion damage, 30% health, minion, minion critical strike multiplier. This is insane. So you want to have this. So it's very simple. Here you go intelligence and health. If you can't go with damage, because the helmet, for example, doesn't allow damage, and you go with health. The same you do with the items. We go with this in a second. Here, plus two to summon skeleton mage is awesome, so you can buff him even more. Minion damage, minion health, resistance is health. This is awesome. And same thing here. Minion damage, minion health. Very simple. Same thing as the Wrath Lord. Nothing crazy. The Death Rattle, of course. Minion damage, minion critical strike chance. Minion critical strike multiplier, intelligence. Insane. Your minions take 20% more damage. That sucks, but there's a trade-off, of course. Um, plus two to sacrifice, it doesn't matter. But this is a good one. If you can get it with LP and put more health on it or intelligence, even better. Ribbons of Blood, you might not have that. It's not that easy to find. If you don't, just get a regular ring with more minion damage or health for them or health for you, etc. Very, very simple. Same thing as this one over here. Intelligence, minion crit. What this does is, and this sort of brings the build to life a lot, is the 30% minion increased leech rate because especially if you run infernal shade on your arc mage he dies very fast and when i go through monoliths like right now the, the last monolith I, I played there i didn't even cast it on him it increases his attack speed a lot but he dies fast so this helps a lot to mitigate that plus your minions your minions cannot be crit so the enemies cannot critical strike your minions which is also very powerful so this is a great addition that sort of Puts another step on the build, but it's not necessary. Okay? That's it for the items. Very simple. Yeah, this one. Uh, increased minion damage in the implicit also. Very simple. Mana region. Minion spell damage. In double in this case. This was a great find. Uh, yeah, you don't need crazy uniques for that at all. Very, very budget build in my eyes. Now to the idols. And then we go to the skills and the passives. Idols, very simple. You want to have health. You run Exanginous, so the more health you have, the more ward you have. Meaning, you're the tanker you are. So you go for health, increased health, just straight health. Health, meaning cooldown recovery, that's fine if you have it. Meaning critical strike, also good, plus health, this is a good one. Health, 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 you can tell, very simple, you're just gonna go health. This is very simple, idols are really not crazy. <laughs> Nothing crazy about that. Let's check the passives. Now, the key thing really is... Very simple as always. It's just minion damage, but especially minion critical strike. Actually, let's just check the skills first so we know what's going on. Skelly Mage. This is the first one you want. This right here is the key thing, the Arc Mage. You can only summon one Skeleton Mage, an Arc Mage, that has significantly more maximum health and damage, fires twice the number of extra projectiles and is larger. So this is the, the chief, he's the king, the King Mage, the Arc Mage. That's what you do. This one, more projectiles, is great because the more you, you shoot in an AoE, the more damage you also do, logically. And this, if you can, go for it, but you most likely, because I have 22 points in the Arc Mage due to my item, you might not have this, so you want, don't want to go for this. Instead, you go over here, additional spell damage, great. Cryomancers, because now they do cold damage, because through to our Lich Scorn, our Dread Shade, our buff, does cold damage, so you want to have Cryomancers. And then you can also go with this, removes regular Skeleton Mages and Pyromancers from the pool of Skeleton Mages, because even if you do this, you might summon a Fire a Mage, and that sucks, because you don't do damage with that. So you have to have, have to take this note. He also takes, uh, makes, does more damage. I can't talk. Anyway, so you have to go here, then base critical strike chance and move faster, very important. But it's mostly for this. Critical multiplier, 30%. This is actually quite a lot. The multiplier is, if you have a crit, how much more damage it does multiply it, right? The chance is how, how likely your chance is to gain, to make a critical. And the multiplier is how much damage it actually does. So you want to have this one maxed. Then you go here, 
more damage based on your maximum mana. Since you are focusing a lot of intelligence as well and you need the mana as well, this will do a lot of damage. You can maybe decide to only go three or two into this and instead use that because attack speed is also great. The faster he shoots, of course, the more damage he does. Very, very simple. If you are like me and you have 22 points in this, you can go into a little bit of both. But this is your Archmage. He, he's the king. Much like with the Wrath Lord, this is actually the exact same tree as in the Wrath Lord. I did not change this at all. <laughs> it's exactly the same. Pretty simple. What you do, I have to remove myself. The key thing is down here, Egoism. The minion targeted by Dreadshade now always critically strikes. But Dreadshade has a cooldown. This is the key thing. You can ignore most of it. You need this down there, Egoism. He needs to always crit. This is very, very powerful. You also get your uh, more damage. And then you have here, reduce health DK. That's all cool. Uh, increase attack and cast speed. This um, in increases the ration of the Dreadshade, of the buff you put on him. Of the area. This is uh, missing minion health gives more buff. Basically just more damage. Everything else is more damage. Very simple. Same thing with Infernal Shade. Now I hate this spell. I will say that. I hate it. I think it sucks. For a bunch of reasons. You only want this one. This is the only node you truly want. Everything else sucks. I might even respect this because it just does more damage. Actually I do. Because it sucks. It just kills him faster. There's no point. Admittedly, he stands in the enemies a lot, but still. Why is this not on free? What? Okay, I was smoking crack. I didn't mean to put the, this. This has to be on three. The key is max speed increase 72% attack speed, cast speed, and movement speed on whoever has the infernal shade on him. This one is so it lasts forever, so you only cast it once. That's great. And haste, that's cool. Everything else sucks in this whole tree. Everything else is ass for you. Because all it does, it is kills, it kills your Skelly Mage faster, right? That's the problem. We also have slow, we have cost less mana, more cast speed, that's all cool. This even, doesn't even do anything because we have this. Some people also go for the armor shred over here. But then you have to take these and they make him die even faster. And he's not as tanky as the Rare for example. So Infernal Shade, I never cast this except, for example, in... In the echoes at the end when there is this gate or that precisely um, spawns people because through his critical strikes he leeches health so as long as he attacks this was this one right as long as he attacks he leeches his health so he doesn't die even if, if he has infernal shade on him but he has to attack pretty much consistently right so i wouldn't recommend even casting infernal shade on him that much really only with bosses because he attacks constantly all with End game, uh, end end of echo attacks, um, wild gates, for example. When there are many enemies around, you can do it. This is also why I actually go with the teleport because then I can put him into the action all the time. If I teleport him with me, he's in the enemies, he attacks, he stays alive. That's the main idea of that. Next thing is the chaos bolts. The key thing about this is it's over here. You first, you first you turn into cold. That's all cool, but this one. The gate. Hitting your minions with Chaos Bolts grants them any damned Ignite, Bleed or Frost by chance that Chaos Bolts gains from this tree for 10 seconds. And you also have... Is it somewhere here? There it is. You need the gate and you need Revolution. Whenever mana is consumed by the Mana Anarchy node, your minions gain additional spell damage based on your maximum mana and they also gain increased cast speed. This buff lasts 13 seconds. This is insane. So what you want to do, and you, you saw me do it earlier, you have him standing around here and you just shoot it at him. Every 10 seconds, that gives him, you can tell how much mana that actually eats. Skill is kind of insane. You can't really spam this because you're out of mana instantly, as you can tell. You just put it, you see this aura around him, he now has the buff that lasts for 10 seconds. The Chaos Bolt buff. So he gets the spell damage and he also gets the Frostbite and all the other shenanigans. So this is why you run this. Um, yeah, also this is the mana anarchy. The, the chance is 39%, so yeah, every second, third bolt that hits usually does the extra damage, which gives you this buff. So usually one of them is enough. One of these, see, he has it again. 
that gives him the buff. This is the idea with the Chaos Bolts. This is really the only reason you have them. So you... You put your Dread Shade on him. You can tell down here. This is... says he has it on him. Lasts for 18 seconds. Then you shoot your Bolts at him. He now has this buff as well. And with a boss, you also cast a Dread Shade. So now he's super buffed. But as you can tell, he dies almost instantly. Unless he would be attacking right now, which he of course isn't. If he would be attacking the enemy, he would just keep, al keep staying alive due to the life leech from crits. You have your free spells to buff him. Then you also have Transplant. Also exactly the same build as with the Wrath Lord. What you do is you're going to go for Bone Armor. Whenever you Transplant, you gain Armor 300. It's more effective and it lasts longer. So this now lasts 4 seconds, I believe. The cooldown is 4.3 seconds, so it's pretty much always available. You're constantly running around with 300 armor. And over here, this is really just this is nice to have. Um, because it does 7,000 damage. So if you kill someone... Actually, the kill threshold is higher. If someone is below 10% health, they die immediately. Even bosses. So you can also transplant into bosses and kill them that way. So that's the skills. Okay, this is the base idea of how you do play this character or this, this build, really. Passives. This one is also exactly the same. Uh, you, have to increase, you only have to take this so you get further to the level 20, to the Infernal Shade. Put one into this, minion damage, damage, that's cool. Intelligence, remember, that scales our damage. Minions have increased attack and cast speed, simple. Uh, you have to do this to get Vault Retention and Resistances, this makes you tankier. Then you go into the Necromancer, also very simple. You need this one for sure, Great Fawns is ne absolutely necessary. Minion health. Minion armor damage reflected. So they are tankier because otherwise he dies very fast. Minion damage, minion attack speed, minion cast speed. Simple. Damage. Although this is physically necrotic, we don't really care, but we want to have this for the armor shred. Okay? You want to get here? You need three in this. Armor shred. Simple. Vault retention. Simple. Minion attack speed. Minion cast speed. Easy. Minion critical strike chance. Minion critical strike damage leached as health. Also great. Health leech in general. Freeze red multiplier. It's all great with our build. This one is insane actually. Uh, this gives you more health, but it reduces your minion's health. So some people max this out to 8. I don't like it actually. I keep it as 5. I was even thinking about putting it lower. Because um, I could just run the last steps of the living. And so far I haven't died much with it, so it's fine. This one, another good. Another good one. You mean steal additional fire and necrotic damage with spells and attacks. Necrotic damage, again, is converted to cold damage. Then we over here we have, again, mini necrotic damage and elemental damage, because cold damage and necrotic is converted to cold. Awesome. Um, and, yeah, critical multiplier, 70%, also shreds even more. And I don't even have all the, the points yet, so I'm going to put some more in there. I'm level 94, yeah. Then you want to have, very early, you should get at least these five here. Damage over time and health, that's irrelevant. We want to have the health. Everything else doesn't do anything to us. Because we want to get the Chaos Bolts. You have to have, you have to put 5 points into this to get the Chaos Bolts. And Lich, we only go here for the Intelligence and Mana region. Because you're out of mana fast and Intelligence scales our damage again. Very, very simple. As I said again, this build is really very simple. There's nothing crazy about it. You, most of the times you just cast your Dread Shade on him and your, your Chaos Bolts. So you have that, he has that, 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 that buff, I can't talk. The Infernal Shade I haven't used yet, as you can tell. I have not used it yet. Because there's no point other than if we are actually fighting bosses. Again, as you can tell, he doesn't do hundreds of thousands of damage. Just keep recasting it. You can also cast Red Shade if it's already on, it doesn't matter. So whenever it's off cooldown, you just cast it again. Give him the buff again. You can also, whenever he stands in the enemies and you throw in your Chaos Bolts, this also of course does damage to the enemies. But it's not really necessary. You keep teleporting with your Transplant. And again, yeah, 15k crit. Sometimes 30k. I have seen him do 50k as well. This was a 25k crit. It's really, really insane. But it does happen. Now we can also cast... Oh shit. I made a mistake. I just accidentally recasted the whole... You know, you can actually see it live. He does no damage there right now because I my Dread Shed is on cooldown because I accidentally recasted him by hitting R instead of 
casting transplant. I wanted to transplant. So if you fuck this up, you die very fast because then you have no damage whatsoever. Without the dread shade on the on the mage, he does no damage. Okay? It's very very important. So you put the dread shade on. Because he has to crit, otherwise it's useless. He dies fast and he does no damage. But if you have it on, very simple. And you can't really do much wrong with it. You see, the, the echoes are simple. I just run around. I don't do much myself. Much like with the Wrath Lord. It's not as flashy as the Wrath Lord, but again, it's a budget version. So I hope this helps for you to, to get into the game easier if you don't have all the uniques. I think it's a cheap build. Let me know in the comments what you think. What you would maybe change. If you want, especially if you want me to make more budget builds that are cheap, that don't have 15 uniques with free legendary potential on it. <laughs> I mean, you can understand why you would have that. So, I can do this more if you want. I think people usually want the flashy ones, but you can also do some more, not so flashy, but beginner cheap builds. Let me know in the comments what you think of it. I like this a lot. It's very easy to get and very great to farm with. But as, again, this is a 100 corruption monolith on the last ruin at the very top over here. The last 100 corruption, no problem. I almost started the exact match to my own fuck up. But if you don't fuck up, you should be fine. I'll see you in the next video, my friends. And have a great day.